The reverse triangle inequality is the one which says this. It says that the, if you take two complex numbers, if you take two complex numbers, then for those two numbers, they, they will have the inequality like this. Look at this. Left-hand side says that the difference of absolute values in the absolute value will never exceed the absolute value of the difference. I wonder if you can repeat that. <laughs> Yeah. The proof of this, it's another proof which is worth seeing. It's, it's a simple proof, but it relies, I mean, every proof I present is simple. It's just, it's not the simplicity which is, which is a good thing about that. The, the, the way to come up with the proof, that's the, the actual skill which I'm trying to carry on, I mean, convey to you. Hopefully, some of you will pick it up. Uh, the proof is based on triangle inequality, the one we just proved. Look at this. You start like this. You start with the absolute value of W, and you make this apparently silly transformation. You say, we can replace it with the something like this. Silly thing you say, right? Just what, what I just say. I just put Z, and I just subtract Z. But then, when I did it like this, I can see here the case for the triangle inequality. Like, here's my two complex numbers. That's one. Here's another. And I can control the sum of the absolute value of the sum of these two by the absolute value of individual, sorry, by the sum of the individual absolute values. The simple, simple trick, which I drew from triangle inequality. And now if I use a simple trick and if I leave these on the left hand side and the rest will go on the right hand side, from here I will conclude here. Here's what I will conclude from here. If I do just a little rearrangement, look at this. Uh, what did I do? Uh, I took this W on the right-hand side, and this uh, difference, it went on the other side, so that's why it has an extra negative, and I flipped the sides around. Again, it's just, it's a, just a massaging of the inequality. The actual job is done by the triangle inequality. I hope you realize that here. The actual job was done here, at this stage. Now, I'll do a similar trick, but now for z rather than w. Here it is. I start with a z. I do my silly trick. See? I just break it like this. And then another instance of triangle inequality. Better in a second. In another instance of triangle inequality, and we come up with something like this. Again, if I do this rearrangement of terms, I will see something like this. Okie dokie. Now, I will combine these two together. I will combine these two together. And here's my combination. Look at this. If I combine these two together, here's my combination. Look at this. I kept, I kept z, or absolute value of z, take absolute value of w in the middle. And I put the other two values around it, like this. Now, here's the actual trick which I like. I mean, here's the actual trick which I like. Look at this. Basically, basically, right now, you're looking at, at the double inequality of this structure. Of this structure. Isn't it? That's what you're looking at. Your x value is here. Here's my x value. Here's the x value. Here's the a value, positive a value, is the x value, is the a value. So if you just extract the structure, if you forget about this inner symbolics, the structure is like this. And I hope you know that if, if you have a double inequality like this, this is equivalent to the inequality like this. Absolute value of a real number, x is a real number here. Absolute value of a real number not exceeding another positive number, equivalent for the number itself being between these two, negative a and a. And if you now take this, if you take this to this case, it will be this inequality. Absolute value of my x number is my x number, is my x number, doesn't exceed my a number. 